Hello, this is uh, Chris from Practical Navigator Training. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about mid-latitude sailings, just to catch you up so far on where we've been. Uh, this is our fourth Thursday evening East Coast time session in what I'm hoping is a 12-week semester um, regarding navigation problems. So if you're studying for your Coast Guard Merchant Mariner exam at a level of 200 tons or greater for the near coastal and, um, and oceans problems, these are stuff you're going to want to know. And uh, so each Thursday night we cover a different topic. So anyway, tonight we're going to cover uh, mid-latitude sailings. And if you were with us for um, the parallel sailings night, um, it's, it's very similar to that. It's just it's a different type of problem that you can see. So mid-latitude sailings, the, the issue here is that uh, we're going to be covering a large distance over the surface of the Earth. And so if you believe that the Earth is a sphere, which most people do, then um, we have to use some spherical trigonometry to get that done. And if you've ever taken a long haul plane ride, uh, you may have seen the plane's course is, is a big arc over the surface of the earth. And so if you were to take a lightsaber and cut the earth in half right through the center of it, and then you were to trace along the outside of the, the crust, that's gonna be the fastest way between any two points on the earth. Um, the most direct route is a great circle. And so these sailings problems, there's parallel sailing, plane sailing, mid-latitude sailing, mercator sailing, all kinds of different stuff. We're gonna solve one type of problem tonight, uh, mid-latitude sailing. So John, Alex, thanks for joining. Nice to have you. Okay, so uh, as usual, there's a couple of terms we need to identify first. And I thought it would be helpful to think about it in terms of a triangle, which you may remember from um, earlier in your life, school or something. Um, so we've got a right triangle here with a, a right angle, a 90 degree angle here. And if you think about point A, that's your that's your starting position, right? So it's where you're going to start out. And you're going to point B, that's your destination. And this is the track that you're going to take, right? So D is just going to be the distance that you cover along that track. C is going to be the course that you need to steer. Now, there's a little trick about course when we're talking about great circle sailings. Sometimes the numbers uh, end up a little bit weird. The whole idea, though, is that a triangle is a triangle, whether you tip it upside down or flip it inside out kind of thing. And so if, if our triangle like this, you know, we're thinking about this angle up here, uh, if you flip it inside out, mathematically, it's going to be the same angle. It might just have a negative sign or a positive sign in front of it. So we'll come back to that in a little bit, but C is a little bit weird. The other two sides of this triangle are um, are interesting and they've got some lingo that you may have heard or may not, but uh, we'll start on this side here. So if we started at position A and we went to position B, there's a difference in latitude. We go from one latitude to another. It's just simply the difference in latitude. Now, I like to call it D lat for difference in latitude. Uh, the proper notation though is L, little l for difference in latitude. It's just simply the difference between the origin and the destination latitudes. And because we live on a sphere and we're not flat, if you disagree, leave a comment, but um, all latitudes are equivalent as you move over the surface of the earth. So D lat is just the difference between two latitudes in our trip. The tricky one for, for some folks is the difference in longitude. So Again, if this is position A and this is position B, there's a difference in longitude there. Like uh, in terms of degrees, it's a certain number of degrees difference. The challenging thing with longitude though is because the earth is a sphere, longitude lines are gonna converge towards the pole and diverge towards the equator, right? So the difference in longitude here and here is the same. Maybe it's 10 degrees. It's 10 degrees at the equator and it's 10 degrees up at the pole. That's the difference in longitude. However, this word P or this letter P is known as departure. Departure is the difference between two longitudes at a given latitude, right? So at a given latitude. If here it's 10 degrees and here it's also 10 degrees, um, departure is gonna be the number of nautical miles at a given latitude. So we covered that in the in the parallel sailings lesson a couple of weeks ago, but uh, departure is just a little tricky because it's kind of a little bit out there. So that kind of covers this triangle, and then you'll find that when we get to our formulas, if you remember the Sokatoa thing from uh, middle school, then uh, that'll be helpful for you here. So um, these are the definitions: L difference in latitude, P for departure, 
D low difference between longitudes, right? And we're keeping P and D low uh, a little bit different just because of uh, the, the curvature of the earth. C for course, D for distance, right? There's one little skill that we have to have before we can commence these types of problems. And uh, it's one we've talked about before, but it's just converting between angle notation and decimal degree notation. So if you had say 24 degrees and 36 minutes, of latitude, that's not gonna be helpful for us when we use a scientific calculator, right? So we need to convert that into decimal degrees, right? And so if you think about uh, how many minutes there are in a degree, there's 60. So if you take 36 divided by 60, you'll get the, uh, the tenths that, that you're left with. So 24.6 degrees is the same as 24 degrees and 36 minutes. So that's kind of a core competency that we're going to need to have when we uh, solve these type of problems or, or any sailings problems for that matter. Go in, in the other direction. If you take 24.6, if you just take the, the decimal that's on the end there and you, um, you put that into 60 as well. So 0. 0.6 times 60 is going to give you back the 36 minutes. So divide going to decimal and then multiply going from decimal to uh, arc notation there. So that's really the only skill set we need to have. Um, I think we should probably just get right into the problems. Well, I guess we need to talk about formulas first. Um, the, the parallel sailing lesson that we did a couple weeks ago, in essence, was just sailing along that leg of this triangle. And so there was a formula in there that we used. It was uh, P, or departure, is equal to D low times the cosine of... Um, of C uh, or of L in, in the case that we were working on parallel problems. But for us here, these are going to be our formulas. So departure, um, distance, and then course, these are all going to be helpful to us. So I'll unveil them as we uh, as we solve the problem. But really, that's pretty much everything that we're going to need to know um, to solve these kind of mid-latitude sailings problems. So without further ado, let's go through an example. And uh, what I'll do is, uh, hey there, Captain uh, Mark. I'll drop a, uh, a problem in the chat box there. So that should be showing up. And uh, we'll just get rid of this. And we'll get rid of all that too. All right, so in this problem, and there's actually only two kinds of mid-latitude problems you can see on the Coast Guard exam. And this is one of them. In essence, they give you two positions and they ask you for the, the course and the distance between them by mid-latitude sailings. And they're, they're actually pretty nice. They're going to say mid-latitude sailings um, in the problem. So that gives you a little bit of a clue. OK, so the first position, position A, is going to be uh, 20 degrees and 0, 0 north and uh, 107.30 west. So the first thing that we would uh, want to do in that case is convert that right over to decimal notation, All right? So we just talked about that a second ago. And luckily in this problem, the Coast Guard has given you kind of easy numbers. So this is going to be equal to 20.0 degrees north. And this one is going to be equal to 107.5 degrees west. So thanks to the Coast Guard for that. They're not always trying to trick you, I guess. Position B in this case was um, 24 degrees and 40 minutes north, and then uh, 112 degrees and um, 30 minutes west. So likewise, let's convert those over to, um, to decimal notation too. So 24, 40, you might be able to do that in your head. 40 out of 60 is 2 thirds. But you type it into the calculator, and you get uh, order 66 there. So we'll go after the Jedis. But uh, 24.67 degrees north. And then uh, the longitude, again, is a nice easy number. So that's 112.5 degrees west. Right? So really, you can, uh, you can get rid of what the Coast Guard gave you, because now we've got it in, in uh, decimal notation, which is where we need to be to solve all these kind of things. So we started out at position A, we headed to position B, and they would like to know uh, what is the distance and course between that. Okay, so um, one quick thing, I really encourage you to draw the situation out all the time. So in this case, we're on a spherical earth, we're in the northern and the western hemisphere. 
right? So some position A. And then we go further north. So we go from 20 to 24. And we go further west from 107 to 112. So we're definitely going in that direction to the northwest, right? And that's going to be helpful later when we think about what course to steer. For instance, on a multiple choice test, if they gave you 330 and 120, you can clearly see it's going to be 330 to the northwest, right? So that's that's kind of the advantage of drawing this out. And there's this whole course notation thing we'll talk about in a minute that gets kind of confusing. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, um, because it's a mid-latitude sailings problem, in essence, what we have is that triangle again. We've got position A down here, position B up here. And instead of uh, doing any kind of crazy math, any integrations or whatever, we're in essence just going to pick the middle latitude right in the middle and solve it like it was a parallel sailings problem. So we did those a couple weeks ago, parallel sailings. Uh, but we first need to find the middle latitude or the mid latitude or the mean latitude, which is which is kind of like the average. So if this is our first latitude and that is our second latitude, you see it's a pretty easy task to get the mid latitude from there. So I'll say that we'll call it LM for mid latitude. And what you do is you take 20 and 24.67 and then find the, the middle. So 20 plus 24.67 divide by two gives you a mid latitude of, uh, oops, I didn't do that right, sorry. 20 plus 24.67 equals divided by two is uh, 22.3 or so for the mid latitude. So it's 22.335 degrees for the mid latitude. And that's just the middle distance between these two there, which is helpful in the formulas that we have uh, coming up. Right, and so the next thing that we want to do is uh, back to that triangle again. Position A, position B. Why don't we find the um, the difference in latitude or little l, little l? And so this is what we said was little l. So from A to B, the uh, the difference in latitude is really just four point six seven degrees right? 4.67 degrees. When we go to use the formulas, all these need to be in arc degrees or arc notation. So we do have to convert that over to arc. Um, and the way to do that is 4.67. Um, and then you multiply that by 60. So you get 280.2 so times 60, 280.2. Um, it's nautical miles. It's arc, arc uh, minutes there. So 280.2. So the difference in latitude, we've got a mileage count there, which is great. Um, so our next step is going to be to find the difference in longitude, right? So the difference in longitude. And this should be familiar from a, uh, a mid-latitude or a uh, parallel sailings problem that we did a couple weeks ago. And the difference in longitude, if this is our origin longitude and this is our destination longitude, it's again, it's just a little bit of um, addition, subtraction to kind of get there. So we take our longitude one and our longitude two, and we find out the difference between them. So that's going to be 112.5 minus 107.5. And uh, that comes up to do, 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 do five degrees, exactly. Double checking my work there, and so that gets uh, put into put into arc as well. So five times sixty is going to give us three hundred minutes or uh, or miles in that case, right? Three hundred minutes. So we've got our mid latitude. We've got our little l, which is the difference in latitude, d lat. We've got our difference in longitude, and so you may remember that p is that, that last little thing that we have to get. So P, departure, and departure again is the difference in latitude, difference in longitude at a given latitude. Because your latitude changes and because the earth kind of, the longitude lines converge at the poles, your P or your departure is gonna be your difference in longitude at a given latitude. So the formula for that is uh, same as it was for parallel sailings. It's the difference in longitude times the uh, cosine of the mid-latitude there. 
Previously, we just did that as latitude for the, the parallel sailings. So departure. So we've got DLO. So that's going to be equal to 300 times the cosine of LM. And we've got LM, so that's 22.335 degrees. So we can uh, type up all that into the calculator. Times 300. And we get uh, 277 and a half. in that case, right? So we got our difference in longitude and our difference in longitude at a given latitude is departure. So it's different. You can see that it's a little different. So what would your uh, what would your departure be at the North Pole? It would be zero, right? Because the longitude lines converge up at the North Pole. So the difference in longitudes at that given latitude of 90 is gonna be zero. So we've got kind of all the pieces of that, uh, that triangle that we talked about. And so uh, I had erased the formula but in essence, if you think, uh, let's see, this was distance, C was course, L was um, your, your D lat, your difference in latitude, P is your departure. Um, if you do SOCATOA, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, uh, cosine equals opposite over adjacent, all that kind of stuff, you can come up with a couple different formulas for how to get C and D. C and D, right? So uh, one of them is the tangent of C, right? Tangent of C is gonna be equal to uh, the departure over the little l, difference in latitude, right? So P over L. So for the tangent of C, that is, uh, that's the formula. So do we have P, do we have L? Yes, we sure do. So that's going to be equal to 277.5 divided by 280.2. I can't do that one in my head. 277.5 divided by 280.2 gives you a 0 0.9904. Zero that's good enough. So how do you figure out this whole tangent business here with, um, with one side? Um, yeah, and so Mark, the um, the L, the D low and the uh, P. So this is this is kind of equal to difference in longitude up here. P is just equal to the difference in longitude at a given latitude. So you're exactly right. Yeah, depending on what latitude you're using, uh, that's what you can plug into it. Because we're doing a mid latitude problem, we're going to use a latitude that's kind of the average of this. So it's in essence, instead of doing calculus, we can just do a little bit of the plug and chug into the trig and uh, get where we need to be. So how do we get from tangent of C to something real? Well, it's the inverse tangent function. And you have that on your calculator. You may not have used it ever before, but really all you gotta do is put in that 0.9904 and then go shift tangent. And it should get you the answer there. So shift tangent, it gives you the uh, the inverse tangent. And so your course is equal to uh, 44.7 degrees. Now, here's where we're going to take a little pause because we said we were heading to the northwest. We we're heading to the north. Does that look like it's a northwesterly course? Sure don't, right? Um, so either we made a mistake or there's something fishy going on. And here's the deal with that. This course is an angular notation between your meridian and your great circle course, right? So think about it like this. I have to make some, make some space up here, sorry. Let's say this is our compass rose and we're on a course of uh, zero, three, zero. Nothing to do with the problem, we're just thinking about that. On the other side of the triangle, an equivalent distance away would be 330, right? So if you take 30 and just pick a trig function, do cosine, 0.866, right? The cosine of 30 is 0.866. If you take 330 and do the cosine of that, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We're going to need a bigger board. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I've got some plans in the future there, guys. So thanks. So the whole point of this is that trig functions backwards and inside out are pretty much the same. And so for us as mariners, like I'm not a math guy. I don't really enjoy it that much, to be honest. Um, 
why don't we think about it this way and we can figure out where we're going. We're definitely going to the Northwest. So we have to modify this, this a little bit. And so when we did this little thought experiment, they were the exact same number, but let's, let's do even one more. What would be the equivalent down here? 30 degrees away from 180 is 150 and 30 degrees away from 180 here is 210. Do the same thing, 150 cosine. It's the same number, there's just a negative sign in front of it now, right? What's your guess here? 210 cosine, same thing, negative sign in front of it. So all they're telling you is if you've got this angle here and this angle here, they're equivalent but opposite, right? If you've got these two angles, they're equivalent with the same sign kind of thing. And so what they're saying here is 44.7 is this angle here. It's not, it's not the actual course that we're going to steer. So in essence, we need to take 360 minus 44.7 to get the actual course that we're looking at. So do that. And you end up with a course of 315 degrees, 315. And that matches up with reality. We're going from A to B, we're heading to the Northwest. So uh, 315 is going to be the course that we need there. So we're, we're halfway through to the answer. We're, we're most of the way through the problem. We started out with these two positions. We started out at A, we're going to B. They want to know the course and the direction to get there. So not all of this is required for, for just the course. We had to calculate some preliminary stuff. We calculated the mid latitude, just the average of the two latitudes. We figured out the difference in latitude, D lat or little l. We figured out the difference in longitude and then the departure. The difference between these two, departure is the difference in longitudes at a given latitude. And then finally, we did some Sokotoa stuff to figure out um, courses and everything. And so we're not done. We just took a little diversion to talk about uh, course angle. The, uh, there's some, some other formulas you can have. Um, the easiest one for distance is D or distance is equal to L over the uh, cosine, right, of, uh, of the course, right? And so there's a couple other ones. One uh, you may have seen around is D equals L secant C. Secant is not one that you probably learned in middle school, but it is the, it's the same as one over cosine. So that's just a way to kind of keep things in terms of sines and cosines that we may have heard of before. All right. And so uh, given this is the case, we're looking for D. We've got L. It's 280.2. We've got C, cosine. And imagine this. You could put either of these numbers in and you're going to figure it out. You might just get the wrong sign if that's the case. But we'll put 44.7 in because that's the mathematical one. And if you, uh, if you type all that into the calculator... Oops, let's see, 44.7 cosine. Multiply it by 280.2, you get 394 nautical miles, right? 394 nautical miles, 0.3 if you wanted to get super precise. On your Coast Guard exam, if you get to the nearest nautical mile, you're going to be just fine. You're going to get the correct answer there. So that looks like a lot, really, if you think about it, draw the situation out, write down what you know, and then you're gonna have to go on a hunt for these, generally these four different things. Difference in, um, difference in latitude or little l, difference in longitude, and then they have some, some weird things that go with them. Difference in longitude and P are related. P is just the difference in longitude at a given latitude. And then LM is the average of the, the latitudes um, that we're working with because it's a uh, it's a mid latitude problem and so they're always going to tell you it's a mid latitude problem so this is where your mind should go so you do have to memorize a little bit of stuff when you're doing these um but this is one of the two types of problems they can give you they're going to give you two positions ask you for the the course and the distance to steam and that's the way to do it by the way if you want to study more of this stuff um i don't think i put it in the video description yet but i will right after right after the session is done is the um, Cutterman's Guide to Navigation Problems. It's a free download, and you can uh, you can practice all a bunch more of these problems if you want. There's uh, there's tons of them in there. Okay, problem number two. If you give me just a moment, I will uh, drop that into the chat window here.
Okay, so in this problem, it's also a mid-latitude problem. And imagine that they tell you what is the latitude and longitude of your arrival location. Uh, on a typical Coast Guard problem, they would say via mid-latitude sailing. I forgot to write that, sorry. We'll do that right now. Via mid-latitude sailing. So um, this time they only give you one position and they give you D and C. They give you the, the distance and the course. So how do you think we're going to have to solve this? Exact same way. You write down what you know, you convert it to decimal notation, and then you use some of those formulas that you unfortunately have to memorize to, uh, to get the rest of the way there. So we'll go kind of quickly through this one because it's very similar to the other one. We'll write down what we know. They said we went 640 nautical miles, and they said our course was 047 degrees true, right? And so that is uh, not any of that weird course angle notation. It's it's the real course. And then we, we left from position A, and it was um, 3445. And it was 140 east. Is there any anything weird that goes on with easterly longitudes or southerly latitudes? Not Not really at all. If you cross the equator, there is a little trick. You gotta do it in two separate parts, right? So from zero to whatever northerly latitude and from zero to whatever southerly latitude, you gotta break it up into problems, uh, two problems. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's none of those in the US Coast Guard database anyway. If you're doing it in real life, um, to be honest, you're using an ECTUS, an electronic chart display and information system. So I don't think many people are doing this by hand in real life, but if you are, more power to you. So let's convert this to uh, decimal notation first. That's always the first thing to do. And luckily they gave us kind of easy numbers here. So 45 minutes out of 60 is 0.75 and then zero, zero there. So to save uh, board space, we're just gonna call it 34.75 degrees north and 140.0 degrees east. east. And they wanna know what is our destination? Where do we land when we do that? So let's draw out the situation first. We got a spherical Earth. We started out at a northerly and an easterly position, right? So we're somewhere there. And we headed off in a direction of 047, something like that. So our destination is going to be more north and most likely more east, right? 640 miles isn't going to get us to the international date line. So we're gonna end up somewhere more north and more east. So on a multiple choice test, if you've got something that's you know, in the Southern hemisphere or the Western, you can eliminate some of those answers as a test strategy just by drawing it out and going from there. Okay, so um, you know, kind of back to this triangle, we've got uh, C, D, this was difference in latitude, this is departure. Let's try and find as much of that stuff as we can. Some of it's given. Right, and uh, we're gonna try and find the rest of it. So, let's find uh, let's find the difference in latitude first. L, that'll help us get a mid latitude, which will help us solve the problem. So, uh, L is equal to a formula of d cosine c, and uh, I'll put this in the notes to the video description for the things you have to memorize if you want. But um, that's a pretty straightforward one because they give us d and c. So it's six hundred and forty times the cosine of forty seven. So 47 cosine times 640 is uh, 436 and a half nautical miles. So because we know the difference in latitude, we can determine the second latitude. Like if we're looking for our position, right? They give us position one, we're looking for position two. We can get the latitude of position two right now. And on a multiple choice test, again, you might be able to just be done with the problem after that. But uh, this isn't helpful, right? For latitudes, nautical miles is equivalent to minutes. So we need to turn that into degrees before we figure out uh, what we're doing. So 436.5 divided by 60 is 7.27 7 degrees. And in which direction did we go? We went to the north. To the north, right? So if our starting latitude was 34.75 and we're adding a bunch more, 
We're adding 7.27. I don't trust myself on camera, sorry. 34.75 plus 7.27. 42 in a little bit of change. North is going to be our second destination. So look at that. We've already figured that out, right? So 42.02 north. So on a multiple choice test, again, like if that was the answer um, and that was the only one of those, you could feel pretty confident in moving on uh, and saving your time for, for other problems that you have trouble with. You do remember you just have to convert this back to minutes, which we will do momentarily. Um, but in the interest of time, we'll, we'll move on here. All right, so you got little L. I guess we should park that over here. Um, so we said that was, uh, it was 436.5 minutes or 7.27 degrees to the north. Cool. So um, because this is a mid-latitude problem, we've got latitude one, now we've got latitude two, we need to find the middle latitude. So it's just gonna be the average between these two. So if we take 34.75 and we add it, add 42.02 and then divide that by two, that should give us our, um, our mid latitude. So I'll just type that all up, 34.75 plus 42.02 equals divided by two. The mid latitude should be 38.4 north, right? So 38.4 north. So we can park that over here too. Just as a double check, right? It should be halfway between these two, which it is. So that's good. All right, what other things in that triangle, right? Here's the triangle. C, D, L, P. And remember, D low was up there as well. Um, so we've got that. We've got that. We've got our mid-latitude. Why don't we go after our departure then? So, so Katoa stuff, departure is P, or P is departure, which is equal to D sine C. So this is another one you either have to memorize or if you can uh, do the triangle thing, so Katoa, your way out of it, you can uh, deduce the formula. Actually, and you know what I should say, if you're taking this at a Coast Guard Regional Exam Center, Bowditch volume two is available to you as a reference. It's an open reference thing. All these formulas are in there and you would not be the first person to teach yourself sailings while you're taking class. So you can do it. It's all good. Okay, so we've got D and C, 640 times the sine of 47. And now uh, we we'll do the same old stuff here. 47 times sine times 640. And that gives us uh, 468 minutes of arc, right? And so that P departure is the difference in longitude at a given latitude. So because the earth, the longitude lines kind of converge, the difference in longitude here and the difference in longitude here is the same in terms of degrees, but it's different in terms of departure. So we're just finding that out. So departure is, uh, P is 468.1, right? And so, We've kind of got all the legs of the triangle now, and uh, we'll go through and just solve the last thing. So if you remember to the parallel sailings um, formula, that's in essence what we're doing. We just combined a little triangle. Some people would say we've combined plane sailing with parallel sailing, and the parallel sailing formula is um, P was equal to D lo, right? Difference in longitude times the cosine of the mid-latitude, right? And so we know P, so if we were to shuffle some of these things around, the difference in longitude, which is what we're looking for, is equal to P um, over the cosine, or I guess one over the cosine of LM, right? So we just we just shuffled some terms around so we can solve for DLO. So P was uh, 468.1, and then cosine LM, was uh, 38.4, right? So if you type all up that into the calculator, sixty-eight 
0.1. You end up with 500. 597.1 minutes of arc. So uh, since we're looking for DLO, right, we're looking in essence for this second longitude, we need to convert that over to um, degrees as well. So 597.1 out of 60 is 9.95 degrees. Right? Oftentimes you, you maybe forget to, uh, to do this stuff at the end, um, but converting to degrees will help you solve your problem. So you started out at 140.0 degrees east. You went more to the east, right? You went 047. So we're gonna add the 9.95 to get a total of, um, total of 149.95 degrees east, right? So, yeah, this is longitude two. Here's a symbol for longitude if you want to be kind of cool, the lambda, right? So it's uh, red and green, 149.95 east. Yeah, and Alex, the um, the formulas are a tricky part. I guess what I would say is um, there's some that you're if you do enough practice problems, they're just going to memorize themselves for you. But uh, what you can do is you can build this triangle out if you remember the parts of it, D, C, difference in latitude and departure, you can do the so -ka toa thing. Um, and if you need that, I know there's a ton of good geometry videos on YouTube uh, to check out, but sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of C is equal to the opposite P over the hypotenuse of D kind of thing. And so if you, if you can solve that, that's one way of getting formulas. The other way, is um, I'm actually using Bowditch as a as a stand for my camera. Sorry, but uh, you can crack open Bowditch and just read that chapter, and it's going to be available to you in the test room. So you can, you know, you can use those formulas that are in there. We didn't actually uh, finish our problem yet, right? So we just have to convert this back to um, regular notation, right? And then we're done. So 0 0.02 times 60. So that's going to be 42 degrees and 01.2 minutes north. And then for this one, 0.95 times 60 is 57. So 149 degrees, 57.0 east. So that would be the final answer there. So in this problem, what we did is they gave us a distance in a course, and they gave us a position. They wanted us to find the second position. And that's the second out of the two types of problems they can give you for mid-latitude sailings. So we went through and figured out as much different stuff as we could, solved some triangles, and then uh, and landed where we needed to be there. So you're only going to see two types of mid-latitude sailings, just like this, or just like the first problem we did. If you want more practice, there's a whole bunch. Um, you can actually just Google it, and you'll see a, a bunch of practice problems probably come up. Uh, or the Cutterman's Guide to Navigation Problems, I'll link to in the video description here in just a few minutes. And, um, and that's got a whole bunch of practice problems as well in it. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave it there tonight. I'll stay online for a couple questions if there are any after that. Don't lose uh, faith with the, the formulas. Like I say, you can look them up, you can memorize them. They're not too, too bad. And then it's it's kind of plug and chug from there. So thanks for watching. Um, next Thursday, I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to try and do a, uh, a broadcast. If it doesn't work out, it'll be the week right after that. And then uh, we'll go we'll go 12 total weeks. Um, so this is week number four. Got eight more to go. Uh, and if you are, are studying for your exam, any kind of questions you have, just let me know either now or you can email me, chris at practicalnavigator.org, and uh, happy to help. All right, so I'll stick around just a few minutes. Otherwise, have a good night. All right, you're welcome, guy. You're welcome, Alex.
Yeah, for sure. Joseph, um, no worries. Happy to do that. Uh, one good thing is these, these streams are always going to be up on the YouTube channel. And what you can do is you can um, click on them afterwards and watch it. You can pause it or kind of down in this corner of your screen, there's a little button for settings and you can change the speed to like three quarters speed or something. Um, so I try and go through it quickly to keep the overall video short. Um, but then with the intention of people looking at it afterwards, pausing it and stuff should be good. So if you're looking for that, it renders right after I, I press the stop button and it should be posted, um, you know, not too much longer after that. Um, so yeah, Joseph, no worries. And uh, I think I was saying we're going to need a bigger board. Yeah, I'm working on that. I'm moving this summer uh, to Washington, D.C. So we'll be uh, hopefully getting a larger, larger board in that room. Um, Alex, I won't be able to do chart problems on this. Um, live stream type setup. Um, we're going to focus on navigation problems, which is, uh, although that sounds like it's chart plotting, if you get a, if you get a Coast Guard letter to test, then um, navigation problems is going to be like compasses, uh, all the celestial stuff, azimuths, amplitudes, things like that, which is really just kind of a paper um, exercise. And then um, chart plotting is, is going to be its own category. So if you're looking for help with the chart plotting, I don't mean to be a salesman or whatever, but uh, on my website, practicalnavigator.org, there's a what I think is a pretty good chart plotting course. And um, I actually just removed all the discounts, but I'll tell you, if you use the uh, the discount code PRANAV, P-R-A-N-A-V, you can get 50% off that course. And I think it's I think it's a, a great course. It's got all the three different charts on there, and then uh, how to solve every type of problem that you're gonna you're gonna see on your exam from unlimited tonnage to uh, operator of uninspected passenger vessel. So yeah, thanks for listening to the sales pitch. It's practicalnavigator.org. Premium courses in there. Uh, chart plotting is one of them. You can take 50% off with the code PRANAV. And then the uh, the other thing I just started doing, if you're interested, is um, I, I rent out chart plotting equipment. So if you don't want to buy your own because it's kind of expensive, um, on there, you can rent it from me. I'll send you the dividers, the ruler, um, two charts, all that kind of stuff you need to practice, as well as a, a little flash drive with a ton of problems on it. Um, and then if you want to keep it, you keep it. If you want to send it back, it give you a kind of 50% back um, for that. So I got a couple of those available if people are interested. But yeah, sorry, long story to answer the question, Alex. Uh, I won't be doing chart plotting in the next few weeks. But um, on the YouTube channel, there's a bunch of videos. And then also on my website, there is a course available. Uh, to log in there. So thanks for asking. Appreciate that. Joseph, yeah, you're welcome. All good. Yeah, yeah, Captain, that uh, does make sense. Uh, the problem is it keeps me out of it, and I know you want to see me. So um, so that's why I stay in there. But uh, I'm trying to f not the best with the live streaming, so uh, I'm really just kind of looking at my laptop right now. But uh, I do have some visions to get a, a camera set up and a better microphone and everything. So thanks for bearing with me. I think this kind of lends itself to just quick and dirty um, rather than a, a more elaborate setup. But yeah, no, you're right. I'll uh, try and do that. Maybe next time we'll, we'll leave the formulas up a little bit longer. Thanks for the feedback. Stability? Yeah, sure. Um, how about we do that? Let's do that next week, or um, if I'm not able to do it, I'll do it the week after, um, stability. And so we're going to focus on kind of the probably middle license level, like 1,600 gross tons uh, for U.S. Coast Guard problems. There's really like seven or eight things you have to memorize. So, yeah, we'll, we'll hit that up. Thanks. I'll make a note of that right now. Stability. That'll be next on the, uh, on the agenda. Thanks for asking. All right, cool. I'm going to sign off then. Thanks for watching and uh, check out the website if you're interested in some of those courses or uh, or the downloads. I'll link to everything here uh, in just a minute once I get the video uh, uploaded to YouTube. All right. Thanks and have a good night.